Thanks for watching another episode of Answer the Call on Overcomers TV. We're at the NRB convention this year, NRB 2020 in Nashville, Tennessee, Christian Media Convention. We're so excited to have Kevin Sorbo with us, actor, director, producer, and author, talking about his new movie, Climate Hustle 2. Kevin, thank you. You are a media mogul. So thanks for I, I don't know if I'm that, you, but you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm staying busy. That's a good thing. Absolutely. I thing. appreciate our partnership yeah. in the gospel. Your testimony is amazing. Thank you. Why don't you share with our viewers a little bit about your walk with the Lord, how you called to be different salt and light in Hollywood? You know what? It, it, I, I've, I've been a Christian my whole life. I really have been. I mean, I, I've gone through my ups and downs in terms of being a good person and a bad person, but I never stopped my own belief. I had my belief in God all my life. Um, it really came down to, what I, one thing I noticed about my series Hercules, which I got a break because it became the most watched TV show in the world, seven years of my life That's good. That's in New good, Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing I noticed that the writers always did, and I, it got reinforced by all these fans writing in uh, fan mail, is the moral issues that they took care of in the series. I don't know if they did it on purpose or whatever it may have been, but whatever they did, there was always a good value with Hercules and trying to help people and save people and, and and n not starting fights, you know, because the whole idea is we live in such an angry world right now, such a divisive world right now. So um, I love the fact that they put that in there. But for me, it was 2010, 10 years ago, where I did my first really faith-based movie. It's called, it's called What If? And Dallas Jenkins directed it. Uh, Larry, Je I mean, Jerry Jenkins' son. Yeah. From All Left Behind. Right. Well, I'm going to throw in the fact I'm doing the next Left Behind movie. We're prepping that right now. I'm directing nice. that one as well. I'm very Thank excited you. to be part of that. Yeah. But... Um, I love doing these kind of movies. I love movies that have a message. There's so much negativity in the world, as I mentioned. There's so much hatred and violence coming out of all these movies right now, and television show and cable shows. I said, why can't we have a good balance? Why can't we have something that, that, that shows there is hope for us, yeah. that there's redemption for us, that there's um, not such a negative aspect of life and living on this planet? And uh, that's what these movies do. And I get stopped all the time. It used to be because of Hercules or Andromeda. Right. I get stopped all the time now because of God's Not Dead. What if Abel's Field, Let There Be Light? That's what people want to see. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? At the end of the day, even during the production, you're not all Christians on the set. And you no. guys are witnessing in the industry. Yeah. That's what's so cool is that you, you have influenced the people in Hollywood and then obviously who's watching. You know what's amazing is the number of people that come up to it and say they want more movies like that. But I've had people walk up to me and said, you know, I was struggling with my faith, and your movies basically helped push me over the edge. I've had Muslims come up to me and say, I became a Christian because of your movies. Wow. That's a true story. That's powerful. And that, to me, is, is, that's a win. That's a godsend to yeah. me. And, and I realized that the powerful tool of television and movies, it's huge. That's Walt true. Disney said, back in the 50s, he said, television and movies will influence people. And look what we do. Right. You know, who runs the culture? Hollywood does. Politics is downstream of culture. Right. When you look at the stuff that's coming out on our movie theaters and look at the stuff that's coming out on TV, my God, we got yeah. we, we we to gotta fight back a little bit because it's just, yeah. it all does is preach anger and hate. That's true. And, uh, you know, Jesus spoke more in parables, stories. Yeah. People remember the story more than they do the sermon. Exactly. And people also want to know how they're living out their faith. What does it look like where the rubber meets the road? You know, we're all like sermons and they're teachable moments, but how do you live it out? What does it look like? Because no perfect people, right? I'm not perfect. I know that. Trust me. You yeah. know I mean, I, there, there are things I'll probably never forgive myself for that I know God's <laughs> forgiven me. But, you know, we do stupid things. And that's, that's the thing out there. You know, as, as Christians, the biggest pushback I get from my, my atheist and agnostic friends, they say they're tired of Christians saying that their way is better than any other way. And we need to learn to be more forgiving. And a lot of people think we're the least forgiving gracious. people. Gracious. Yeah. A, a lot of people are like that. You mentioned gracious. I tell my friends that, uh, that aren't believers, I said, then find a place in your life that you're grateful for things instead of being hateful towards things. Right, right. When you're in your car, you're stuck in traffic, instead of cursing out the traffic and everybody else being on the road, why don't you say, you know what, I'm grateful the sun's out today. I'm yeah. grateful that I got hot water at home. I'm grateful I got food on the table. Right. Be grateful for things instead of being negative. All we do is look for the negative in life right now. Yeah. Everybody's doing that, and we need to get past that. You know, and that's why we love the Overcomers TV. At the end of the day, God wants us to be overcome. Yeah. You know, we want to overcome temptation, overcome the, the pitfalls, the you know, all that as well. And we also did an interview for you with your testimony for the Lindell Recovery Network as hope videos, testimony. So you talked about that. These movies breed hope. So when I say Overcomers TV... By, by the way, I've had about seven people yesterday come up to me at the table here in the booth at the NRB yeah. and show me that they're already watching it, that they've already seen it, wow. which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. you got to love media, man. Yeah, it's just stuff it's goes goes viral and, and that's why we do it. We're able to reach the highways and the byways all around the world 
it's impossible to track. I think if we actually tracked and knew the real impact, we'd probably get prideful about that, <laughs> you know? But God's like, hey, we'll give you a little glimpse of Boom. some of the impact just to keep you uh, We did an excited. episode of Hercules called Pride Comes Before a Brawl. So <laughs> Pride Comes Before the Brawl or the Ball. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So let's talk about Climate Hustle 2. This new yeah. movie comes out April 21st. Tell us about the movie. It's a Fathom event. We're going to be in about a thousand screens and counting right now. Um, it's, it's obviously a sequel to Climate Hustle number one. I, I know people are going to watch this. They're going to hate this. It shows truth and facts and statistics and things. You know, people want to live their own truth, but two plus two equals four. Don't change it. You know? Not how you feel so, about it. Yeah. Not, well, I think it's six today. You know, so so we show the amount of scientists, which is much greater than the scientists that are for the belief of the climate that we're destroying the climate. Um, this shows the other side, and it shows the hypocrisy coming from the people that are pushing this agenda that we're killing the planet. Yeah. Are there things we can do better? Sure. Look, I'm all for a green world. I'm all for uh, changing whatever it may be, energy sources and stuff like that. It's a stewardship issue. I exactly. Yeah. But it's, yeah. become an, it's become such a hot topic out there that they use this little girl, this, this Greta girl from, you know, how dare you, she says that she blames America. America is one of the we're one of the best countries in the world. We're like 0.03% of the problem. Look at what China's doing. Look what Russia's doing. Look what India's doing. Those are much bigger problems. This movie, this documentary does it in a very humorous way, a very truthful way, and just shows people, look, the, the, the polar bears are fine. The, the, the ice caps are growing. The temperature's actually gotten colder over the last 10 years. It's called weather, folks. It changes all the time. We don't know what the weather was like in the 1300s or 700s no or before that. And we don't have any, especially and, on a global perspective. And there's there's, a, there's um, a video out there from the 1930s, I think it is, talking about global warming then, that, oh my gosh, we're losing all the coastlines. You know, these wacky Congress people go out and say, yes, by by the in 12 years, the world's going to be destroyed. Right. We and, also believe and, God's sovereign, and he's yeah. over universes. Yes. He can handle our, our, uh, he our handle atmosphere. It. He created it, yeah. and he can clean up after us. You I know, think he I'm, spends most of his time cleaning up after us. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Just shaking his head going, idiots. <laughs> 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 Must I, I come got, down there? Again? I got better things to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. so that's good. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking that word propaganda. I don't hear that a lot. But that's what media is feeding, their message, their narrative. Isn't that, is that propaganda? Fake news is in. You know what? They love to keep us in fear. Think about that. I remember I was watching something on, on tornadoes one time, and they showed this tornado that went through Oklahoma, wherever it visits every day, you know. And it showed how bad it was. It was a horrible event. I grew up in Minnesota. We had tornadoes all the time. And then the, the, the narrator comes on and says, yes, this was an F3, but what if it was an F5? And they show the damage it would have done. I go, yep, but it wasn't. Right, you know? right, yeah. They love to keep us in fear. They call it clickbait, too. At the end it's of the day, Don the Hanley's titles. song, Dirty Laundry. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, forgiveness. Then we'll play forgiveness it's next. Dirty laundry. We yeah, forgiveness. Exactly. We're stuck on Don Henley's. So. I, I broke on. I broke in tears. God yeah. used that song one day. Yeah. When I was a crackhead. I was on the porch, and yeah. that song just. Broke me, and, and it talks about yeah. one relationship, but the reality is, it talks about everything in life. Yeah, right. because we need to get back to forgiveness. So let's talk about relationships. Your wife, yeah. Sam, your kids—they're involved. You're, you know, I know you're in movies, and people see you as a star, but it's really a, a family calling that mm -hmm. you guys are all in. Talk about that. Well, you know, we, we decided to start homeschooling years ago. We started with my oldest son, who's now 18, went by the time he was in second grade, because we saw what's going on in our public education system. To me, there's a purposeful dumbing down of our kids. Our school system is, is pathetic. And uh, we rank somewhere like 27th in the world right now. And oh, there should wow. be no reason for that. I have an after school program in LA Unified. We deal with over 12,000 students, okay? We've averaged, I've done this now for 23 years. LA Unified has averaged over that time period a 54% dropout rate starting as low as fifth grade. 54%. Wow. The 12,000 kids that I work with every year on a worldfitforkids.org. Check it out, worldfitforkids.org. We average a 98% graduation rate and a 67% higher GPA. Why is that? What are we doing for those three hours after school that the schools can't do through the, through the union that they have? First My dad was a teacher is, for 35 first years. First mistake was so taking the Bible out of school. Of course. And then prayer. Isn't that it was, interesting? They took the Bible out of schools, but they give it to people in prison? <laughs> 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 Explain that one to me. <laughs> An here's, ounce here's of prevention is better than a pound of cure. The Angola prison in Louisiana had the highest murder rate of all of all uh, prisons in America. Okay, right. the highest murder rate. There hasn't been one murder rate, one murder since 2005. They bought the Bible in be before that. Okay, wow. there's been a, a number of they have the Bible classes. There's been a number number of them that have actually become um, ministers and priests within within that wow. Bible study there. So what does that say? It says, 
here we have the cure for cancer, but we don't want to give it to anybody. Yeah. We took the Bibles out of the school, and look what's going on in our school. With the amount of violence, the amount of education falling down, right. the amount of uh, pregnancies uprising, the amount of suicides. Right. It's the second leading cause right. Of, right. of death among teenagers. Yeah, and you know what? Not everybody can read the Bible, and you guys have an audio Bible project that came out a couple of years ago. Is that still Breathe cooking? Bible. Yeah. Please check out Breathe Bible. It's a New Testament only. The Old Testament will come later, but Breathe Bible has 80 different actors portraying the different biblical figures within the Bible. Um, breathebible.com, you can check it out. Go to kevinsorbo.net if you want an autographed copy. I got them on, you can come, come to there. Awesome. So, because some people and do. you're God, want, you're the voice of God. I play the voice of God. I got an upgrade from my half God days on Hercules. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm a capital G now. But you know what, I call it, I call it theater for the mind. If you were in a kitchen making dinner and you heard it, your husband or your son put on Breathe Bible in the living room, you would think they're watching a movie because it's got full orchestra like a movie yeah. does. It's got the soundtrack. You hear the voices. You hear the different voices. You hear the narrator come in. You hear uh, the, the nails pounding in. Yeah. You hear the people cheering and laughing and crying I hate to during say, that time. We need it these days. We're like ADD media we, yeah. If we don't have a million images coming it's through, true. people just get, they zone out yeah. and they, you know, they click. Uh, we're, we're in the process now of doing uh, a Bible uh, for l Latino population. We're doing a, a, a total, get a bunch of uh, Spanish and the Latino uh, uh, actors, famous people do the voices of the entire Bible. That's awesome. Is there anything else you want to share with our viewers before we close? I would, uh, I would love to get back. Well, we talked about that one. Um, I would like to talk about A Miracle in East Texas, which is coming out later this year. Uh, it's a movie I directed. It's a true story set in 1930. It's a wonderful movie. It's got John Ratzenberger in it. It's got uh, Lou Gossett Jr., Tyler Maines in it. It's just a really wonderful cast. True story about two common that would woo widows out of their money and fake oil wells, but they actually strike oil. It's a very interesting story, and it deals with, uh, at the very end, there's a redemption factor to it, but it's winning all kinds of awards right now, but it's not... It's not preaching in any way. It's like, it's like The Blind Side. Yeah. It's a wonderful movie that everybody will look at and go, I just enjoyed that movie. It's won Best Romantic Comedy to Best Faith-Based Film at, yeah. at film festivals. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Kevin, thanks for joining us. My thanks pleasure. for answering the call. You're right. an overcomer for sure. Awesome. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews here at Nashville, Tennessee, NRB 2020. Keep watching. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Answering the Call on Overcomers TV. I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh, your show host and executive producer. We're at NRB 2020 in Nashville, Tennessee this year, and we're meeting with a lot of ministry leaders who are serious about sharing the gospel and making disciples. My next guest is Nina and Michelle. They're actually in media. They have a teaching ministry. We met last year, and we've been partners ever since. We're just so excited about what you guys are doing and uh, having some time to, to share with our viewers about your ministry. Thank you so much for being for inviting us on and having us be here with you, Chuck. We love this guy. We love his ministry and his heart for serving the Lord and for going to get the lost and the broken, just like Jesus. Yes. You know, leaves the 99 to go after that one, and you have such a heart for that. And we're just happy to be partnering with you and being part of this with you. We love your heart. And and Grace, Grace with Nina Michelle, we do a TV show, and we talk about being overcomers, and and we are we do not shy away from the gospel. No. We preach the yes. gospel exactly how it is because we know that it is the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage Amen. and without yes. Jesus we're all hopeless yeah I say you know we're in a world right now that has spiritual indigestion you know there's a million <laughs> religions of the world and I think that was part of Jesus's purpose yes. even yes. then was to set the record straight right paganism idolatry 101 but you know he came to set the record straight on some false teaching so you guys go in depth you have a teaching ministry and uh, talk about some of the topics you've covered, your audience, who you're trying to reach, and some of the impact. Well, we have a, uh, a pretty big Facebook presence, and so we do a daily devotion there every day. And what happens is we end up seeing what the most readers or what really resonated with our viewers. And a lot of it, whether it's fear and anxiety and overcoming and addiction and all the different things, depression has been big oppression. Right. And so, and then we will typically take those subjects and that's our show material for our programs because we know that's what people are really dealing with right now and yeah there are so many that are that are hurting and that feel hopeless and and we know that you know the Bible says if you lift up the name of Jesus he will draw all men unto himself and that's yeah. that's the goal you know that we want 
people to be saved. We're asking the Lord to give us the nations. And I love the uh, the word that's, that's, that is salvation, which means sozo. When right. Jesus saves, he completely saves. The Bible says he saves us to the uttermost. That means you are free of addiction. Yeah. You are free of of all bondage and right. we can get in bondage in different ways right. you know That's it true. doesn't have to just be drugs or Amen. alcohol like you were saying right. earlier before we started taping yeah and you know grace grace what an amazing name for a show but i think we play the grace card much too often like oh yeah. god understands he understands this is my struggle and i don't you know you don't have to live with it for the rest of your life. You really right. don't. But I think the grace is really the power to overcome. Right. Talk about that. Well, it's a standout scripture for us. That's how we got the show name. Because over in Zechariah, it says, Who are you, O great mountain? But you shall become a level plain with shouts of grace, grace to it. And so what are the mountains in our lives, the addictions? What are the problems, the strongholds? Because so many of these things... Our people get addicted. Why do they, I, I always say this. No one ever just sets out and says, I think I'll get an addiction today. You know, exactly. but whatever they're feeding, whatever pain or hurt they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, numb through that is, you know, Jesus is the one that can, with grace, grace, take that from you when you completely rely on him. Because apart from him, we can do nothing. And that's so true. And, you know, a lot of the, it's yeah. such a cycle with people. Yeah. And, you know, they're always searching for that next, latest, greatest to get through things. And and yet, it's really all about Him. And He is the chain breaker. He is the answer. He is the one who comes to set the captives free indeed. You know, Amen. Jesus. Well, as a, um, I, I experienced it firsthand, the addiction, uh, with my father. And uh, I grew up with a, a dad who was very successful, but he was a drinker. And, and he was so successful that he was able to drink himself to death wow. yeah. at 40. Yeah. So the addiction subject is very, very dear to, to my heart. Yeah. 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 Well, we all know somebody who has an addiction or perished from an addiction. Yes, yeah. and, 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 the, and it's like a bomb going off in a household. There's such a, a darkness and a heaviness that goes with it. And, and I saw the struggle. You know, um, ultimately, he was saved, praise God, but he actually was saved stopped drinking and died of DTs. So then it was like, whoa, what just happened? Wow. Yeah. You know, and it was like within three days. So it was, you know, he stopped and then he was gone. Yeah. But there, there has always been a comfort in our family because we knew that he got right with the Lord right. and that he was set free ultimately. But that's not the way we want people to go. Yeah. You know? And I think, you know, people who struggle with sin are always wondering about that, can I lose my salvation? So I always know it's not a performance test. It no. never will be right. a performance test. But if you are walking in the power, you will perform better. Yes. yes. Not perfect. We'll always, you know, we'll never become sinless, but we should start sinning less. Right. And, yes. and some of I those like sins cause an early grave. This temple, we need, we need to take care the of it. Wages of sin right. is, is death. death. Yes. Yeah. And that is the real point of grace because it's like you can't play Russian roulette with God. Like he knows your heart. So the right. people who think, oh, I'll just do this today and repent tomorrow. Right. That's, that's a knowing that you're going to do that. You know, God will not be mocked. And so it is, it is, he, he knows your heart to do better. He knows your heart. He knows the struggles are real and he will help you with that. But I think a lot of people just sort of especially like a younger generation will mock God in those regards and just think that they can just, you know, repent tomorrow. And then when they fully plan on going back to the same old thing the next day. So that's the difference. That's what grace actually is, is, is it's a heart condition. It's, yeah. it's Jesus knowing your heart to really want to be different and to right. change. And I love that scripture that says he will take our soul out of prison that he will, yes. he will, Put us among the righteous. Like he doesn't just take your soul out of prison. He puts you in a in a great place. Yes. He puts you in a place of prosperity. Right. You were called 
to live right now. He said before the foundations of the earth, I knew yeah. when you would live and where you would live. Right. And he wants you to fulfill your purpose and be right. like David. Right. The yeah. Bible says when he had done all he knew to do, yeah. he went on to be with the Lord. All that the Lord called him to yes. do. You know, and, and we don't want bondage right. of any kind right. to keep us back. Right. I know Joel talks about there'll be a day when I pour out my spirit on mankind and, and they'll have dreams, dream dreams, and have visions. Amen. And you, nobody will have to teach each other know God. God reveals himself to people, but Amen. what he did tell us to do before he ascended was make disciples, teach them to obey. Yes. And as parents, you have children, both of yes. you. You wanted to teach your kids to obey. And when you lay down the rules, you lay down the groundwork, and they willfully disobey what you specifically covered in detail. I know you know this. Here's the rule. No friends over after school until your homework's done. The next day you realize they had friends over and their homework wasn't done. Right. You willfully disobeyed me. The consequences are usually a little bit more severe than the without knowledge stuff. Right, 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 exactly. And you know, and that's the thing, but we are all here for such a time as this. And that's yeah. the thing. When we yes. think about um, the Bible, I love it, it says that the kingdom is within us. Yeah. You know, and so the kingdom of heaven is always advancing. And so we get to be on the forefront of getting the word out there. And you know, when you're talking about being delivered from these kinds of things, I love that the Bible says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And yeah. God has really been speaking to me about that because so I dove in to find out, okay, what does that really mean? And do you know it means final deliverance? Wow. The righteousness of God in Christ. And when you say that yeah. over yourself, you're actually telling the enemy who you are. Yeah. You're actually announcing to him, you don't get to mess with me or my family. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Yeah. And so, you know, we get to be part of what That's God good. wants to do in getting people set free. Yeah. And really, it's just about knowing him. Yeah. You know, if you want freedom, it's knowing him. Yeah. It's when you, knowing him. you know your husbands well and you want to be pleasing to your husband, the more you know them, the more you fall in love with them and you want to be pleasing. Not because I'm just a wife or I'm just a husband and, I, and I'm out of obligation. I'm married. This is what I'm supposed to do. It's really out of a love and a respect for yes. the relationship and the trust and everything else that goes with right. that. Right, yeah. exactly. You know, uh, I, I love that scripture that says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, then you're going to be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and perfect Amen. will. Yeah. So sometimes when we are uh, walking in bondage of any kind, whether we're Christian or not, uh, we're walking in a pattern, you know, and the Lord wants us to break those patterns. He wants to deliver us from those patterns and shatter those patterns and begin to sh make a shift in our lives so that we can be transformed Amen. and get in the will of God. Amen. So one of the key verses for the show is Revelations 12, 11. 10 says the enemy, the accuser of the brethren was cast mm -hmm. down, but 11 says they overcame the evil one by the blood of the lamb Amen. and the word of their testimony. testimony. Talk about the power of a testimony. Hallelujah. Oh, well, you know, we're all broken and in need of a savior, everybody. Yeah. And you know, we know so many wonderful, amazing Christian people that you look at them, you would never know some of the things they've gone through. Yeah. But it is the power of Jesus Christ. And we have been through so many things over and over again, it seems, in our lives. We have the test and the money. We've got it all. <laughs> I love do? that line. And so we do. Yeah. We have it all. And so, <laughs> and, um, but you know, when I look back at my life and, and a lot of the things that I personally have overcome, you too, is, is, is nothing but the power of Jesus. But when you see that and you know that like even how we got here today is such an amazing story, even how we met. Yeah. And that that nothing could, none of this could have been done without God. But I also know and appreciate that it is because I've suffered through some things yeah. that yeah. it gives you a compassion for what other people are going through. True. And it also makes you know that he is truly so close to the brokenhearted. He is. And he, he does yeah. bind up our wounds. He does. And then sets us down in a place where we can help others through those exact same things because you get it. You know what it's like. Well, and I think about like going back to the struggle of addiction, you know, that people feel that condemnation, 
that comes with it. You know, they they get in a rut and they feel like there's no way out. You yeah. know, maybe it happened for them, but it's not going to happen for me. But Jesus is no respecter worthy. of persons. That's good. And so there's great news in that he's going to deliver you and he, he'll deliver our family members. There's so many parents right now praying for children who have addictions, you know, and, and so I promise you that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly more than we can ask or think. And I always think, don't just save them a little bit, save them to the uttermost. Let them be mighty in the land, you know, pay the enemy back. Yes. And, and the, talking about the blood of the lamb. Right. That was the one scripture that we learned when my family got saved. Yeah. You know, it was it was like we had watched that uh, Moses, you know, the, the uh, Ten yeah. Commandments. Right, right. And how they put the blood on the door. Right. We had done that every year, even though they weren't Christians. You know, right, we right, watched right. that at Easter. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So I could picture that. Right. And so I was, you know, 17 years old, pleading the blood over everything. Right. You know, right. I plead exactly. the blood. That's good. You know, I yeah. want protection. Cover yeah. us. That's right. You know, because right. the enemy could not touch them as yeah. long as the blood Amen. was there. And so we're covered in the blood. Our family members are covered in the blood. That's good. It's about well, I'm taking your authority. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm so excited about our partnership. I'm glad that our viewers of Overcomers TV are going to get some doses. I know you have some teachings already in the can. We're going to add it to our lineup and we're going to partner in media and we're going to, you, God has shown us some good stuff and it's our obligation yes, to share yes. it. So sharing yes, is God. caring. How can our viewers learn a little bit more about your ministry and get involved and help supporting what you guys do? Well, thanks for asking. We are all over online at Grace Grace with Nina Michelle and we're on YouTube. We're also on, on Uplift, Parables, Faith TV, God TV, Direct TV. And just uh, we do a daily devotion on Facebook and it is under Nina Keegan Ministries or Grace Grace with Nina Michelle on Facebook. So we're all over the place where you can find us and see what we're doing. We do women's conferences. And That's awesome. Any final uh, closing thoughts before we uh, say goodbye to our viewers? Well, we wish just blessing upon blessings over Amen. all that you're doing. We're yes. so excited for we you. We love your, your heart, so yes. we know this is going to be successful. Well, yes. God, God gave us all a heart transplant, right? Yes. He did. Right. So he little did. by little. Amen. You know, you know what? It, this is what I love. You know, in the in the Bible, when it when Paul, you know, that guy, he's always in prison, and yet he <laughs> writes, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. But do you know what comes before that? He says, what does any of it matter? What does it matter unless the gospel praise God of Jesus Christ is being preached you know so at the end of the day it's like you know take the whole world and give me Jesus because that's what we got to do and that's what you're doing and we're so proud of you we're we so are excited proud of you. what you're doing Chuck Life's a voice, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's good yeah Nina, Michelle thank you so much for joining us Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews here in Nashville, Tennessee, NRB 2020, so you can answer the call and be an overcomer. 